Hello, a very vibrant, very lovely and a very enchanting good evening to one and all. So, we have decided in this session to start off something regarding which you are already aware of. Oh my God, sir, then which chapter you are going to start today? Today, I have decided to take up your amalgamation. So, amalgamation of companies is the topic which we are going to start up in today's session. And, of course, it's a pretty prolonged chapter and little bit of knowledge already you have no doubt about that. But at the same time, as is the habit, we are going to start right from the scratches and then we, we shall move over to the higher levels of this particular chapter. <laughs> Correct? Amalgamation, absorption, very important for all professional level students and you can always expect a question out of this particular topic, but at the same time, I keep on saying actually never go in the examination with a particular feeling that a sure question will be there from this particular topic. Always presume that each chapter is very important. Your level of focus and your intensity should be equally distributed among all the facets. So we are going to start amalgamation in spite of the fact that you know a lot about this. We still are going to take what we call basics and in case if some of you might feel that you are already well aware of the basic, then you can directly move over to the other sessions, correct? So, but we on our part will start from the basics, no doubt about that, presuming that none of you know anything about this particular topic. So, amalgamation, absorption, reconstruction, you have heard the word corporate restructuring. I do not know whether you have heard about it or not. Actually, corporate restructuring. Corporate restructuring. Amalgamation, absorption and external reconstruction, all these are actually facets of corporate restructuring, even buyback, correct? Even internal reconstruction, all these topics actually fall within the purview of corporate restructuring. But at your level, we shall confine our discussion to amalgamation, absorption and external reconstruction, correct? So, before we start our journey to understand the what we call complexities of this particular topic, we shall start the journey and journey should be started from where the journey starts as is the saying. So, taking that saying into account, we are going to start uh, from the basics. So, basic level. So, try to understand and try to actually understand the intricacies of these terms and once these terms will become absolutely clearer to you, then we will move over to the higher levels, correct? Now, topic for the day is, let me write the topic and then I will start. So, I told you, actually all these are part of corporate restructuring. Corporate restructuring. So that doesn't mean that it is the name of the chapter. Corporate restructuring. Corporate restructuring and under it we are going to study amalgamation, absorption and external reconstruction. Amalgamation, amalgamation, absorption. and reconstruction, external reconstruction. There is yet another topic, internal reconstruction, which is not part of this process. Internal reconstruction.
So, amalgamation, absorption, external reconstruction, these are part of your syllabus and we are going to discuss them in one by one but before actually we as i said move our move a step forward let let us actually first of all understand in a formidable manner the meaning of all these what we call terms amalgamation what exactly we mean by amalgamation that's a term actually so often used by us especially those who are in commerce field amalgamation Suppose there are two companies, first we are trying to grasp the meaning of amalgamation, pay attention, amalgamation. One by one, we are going to take amalgamation first and then we shall move over to absorption. We are trying to grasp the meaning of amalgamation of companies. So what we mean by amalgamation? Suppose there are two companies, one is X limited and another one is Y limited. There are two companies, one is X limited and another one is Y limited. We further presume that both these companies are engaged in same line of trade. Now if both these companies are engaged in same line of trade, that means either both are in computer business or say both are in plastic business or presume both are in computer business. We further presume that financial structure and the financial strength of both these companies are absolutely on similar platform. It means both these companies have equal structure, equal financial strength, equal financial soundness. Now, we have presumed two things that one both these companies are in same line of trade and second both these companies have got what we call similar financial strength suppose both these two entities try to try to merge into a one single entity let us say both these company enter into an agreement that we shall merge into a one single entity or we will together form a one single entity so as you know this is a case of amalgamation it means two vital ingredients of amalgamations are one amalgamation is possible between two entities which are equal in financial stature remember one thing don't confuse by the fact amalgamation cannot take place between tom and harry i do not know whether you have heard this phrase or not Tom and Harry, it means between two unequal persons. Is it clear to you? So amalgamation can never take place between Tom and Harry. So that means actually amalgamation can either take place between Tom and Tom or between Harry and Harry. Is it clear to you? So that is the reason actually being commerce and especially professional student, you should be aware of the fact that amalgamation generally takes place between such entities which have equal financial strength, number one, and which both are engaged in same line of trade. Now, we are saying that X limited and Y limited have decided to form and merge into a one single entity. But how you are going to interpret it from the accounting point of view? From the accounting point of view, we would say this way round that X limited has sold its business to Y limited. From accounting point of view, we will interpret this situation this way round. Similarly, I would say Y limited has sold its business to XY limited. Remember one thing, there is no doubt about that, that X and Y limited have decided to form a single entity. They have decided to join hands and they have decided to form and merge into a single entity. But from accounting point of view, we will have to interpret this situation this way around. That X limited has sold its business to XY limited or you can say Y limited sold its business to XY limited. You can also say it this way around that this company has taken over X and Y limited. You can also interpret it this way round. Similarly, you can say XY Limited has taken over Y Limited. 
Once again, I am repeating, actually, no doubt these two are separate entities. They have got similar financial strength. They are engaged in same line of trade. They have decided to join hands. They decided to form and merge into a one single entity. No doubt about that. But from the accounting point of view, how you are going to interpret it, you are going to interpret it either way, either this way. That X Limited sold its business to XY Limited. Or you can say Y Limited sold its business to XY Limited. Or you can also interpret it this way round. That X, XY Limited purchased the business of Y Limited. Or XY Limited acquired X Limited. That is how you are going to interpret it. Correct? Number one. Number two. As you are well aware of the fact that in accounts, especially in commerce, the entity, the seller entity is known as vendor entity. So I can say in this case that X limited and X limited and Y limited are vendor entities. You can say X limited and Y limited are vendor entity. Why these are vendor entities? It should be familiar to you now. Correct? Because both these entities are selling their business off to XY Limited. We have interpreted it this way round that both these companies are selling their business to XY Limited. However, the actual fact will remain unchanged that both these entities have decided to join, to join and merge into a single entity. This fact will remain no doubt about that, but our interpretation states that X Limited sold its business to XY and similarly Y Limited sold its business to XY Limited. So that is the reason why X Limited and Y Limited will be referred to as vendor entities. Is it clear to you or not? Now if it is clear to you then we can say that these can X Limited and Y Limited, these entity can also be termed as when liquidating entity. These entities can also be termed as liquidating entities. Why these entities can be termed as liquidating entities? The point is this reason. Let me write first then I am going to let you know in a short while. Since X Limited has sold its business to XY Limited. So from the point of view of X Limited, its entity has gone into uh, ashes. No doubt about that. It is no more. If I am going to sell my business, so from my point of view, I do not owe, I do not own any further business. So at, similarly, it means the entire business of Mr. X has liquidated. So that is the reason X Limited and Y Limited can also be referred to as liquidating entities. Is it clear? Similarly, the newly formed company XY Limited will be called purchasing unit. It will be called purchasing unit. Is it clear to you? It will be called as purchasing unit. Purchasing unit. Sometime during my discussion, if I would say old companies, you immediately interpret it this way that I am referring to vendor entities or what we call liquidating entities. So for simplicity's sake, I may say during my discussion, old, these are old companies, although these, it is not a very sound term, but just for simplicity's sake, I may use it during the discussion. Similarly, purchasing unit I may refer to as new firm. Is it clear to you? But the fact is that X limited and Y limited in this case will be called vendor entity or liquidating entity. While XY which is newly formed company will be termed as purchasing unit. Is it clear to you? Is it clear to you or not? Now if it is clear to you then we will move a step further. We will write something about amalgamation and then we are going to discuss something new. So under amalgamation you have noticed what? Point number one. So we can say this is our first topic that is concept one. 
or segment one of amalgamation. Under the concept, we are trying to understand the meaning concept one. In this concept, we are trying to analyze the meaning of these terms. Correct? Meaning of terms. Meaning of terms. So, concept number one. Under this session, we are trying to analyze the meaning. So, first of all, amalgamation. As you have seen that amalgamation, so I am writing, so please write along with me. Amalgamation. When two or more than two entities, when two or more than two entities, when two or more than, when two or more than two entities, two entities merge into, merge into a one single, one single entity one single entity then it is known as a case of amalgamation then it is known as then it is known as a case of amalgamation as a case of amalgamation so, it is known as a case of amalgamation. Correct? Case of amalgamation. Now, the next question is, is it possible to have amalgamation between each and every entity? The answer is big no. Why? The reason is that amalgamation, as I told you casually, that amalgamation could be possible only between either Tom and Tom or Harry and Harry. So it means amalgamation is possible only between those entities which have got similar financial structure and which are engaged in same line of trade. So please write here. Amalgamation generally take place between amalgamation, amalgamation. Amalgamation generally takes place between amalgamation generally takes place between amalgamation generally takes place between or among place between or among entities entities having having similar financial strength having similar financial strength similar financial strength similar financial strength and which are engaged in and which are engaged in engaged in same line of trade which are engaged in same line of trade same line of trade. Is it clear to you? So, this is, these are the preconditions for the amalgamation. Correct? Now, but the next question is, after you have written this point, now note it down, note down this diagram. So that through this diagram, you will come to know actually that X and Y limited will be called vendor or liquidating company. If you want to note it down, 
and X and Y limited will be called purchasing unit. Correct? Then final point, why companies amalgamate? What's the use of amalgamation? Why they take such a big discussion? Recently in today's newspaper, actually there was a news that MTNL and BSES, those among you who are not residing in Delhi, let me tell you. So MTNL, Mahanagar Telephone Nagar Nigam, MTNL Limited and BSES which supplies actually electricity and it is responsible for landline telephone. So both these entities in today's newspaper actually, uh, there is a new that both these companies or rather should I say both these entities big corporations have decided to amalgamate is it clear to you now the question is why the, they are interested in amalgamating so why the companies or the corporate giants actually they handshake with each other what's the use what mileage actually they draw out of it so please write along with me in order to comprehend this Entities amalgamate, entities, entities amalgamate, entities amalgamate to derive following mileages, to derive following mileages means advantages, following mileages. What are the mileages? Needless to add actually when two big tycoons, when two big giants having resounding financial strength are going to join to, together and form a single entity, what will happen? Production could be possible on a mass scale and as you know better than I actually, then it will result in what we call lower cost of production. So the first big advantage is that cost of production gets reduces lower cost of production lower cost of production this is the first major and prominent advantage which accrues out of amalgamation lower cost of production correct lower cost of production now second one under the second one actually when two big giants, as I, I have been telling you since the beginning of this particular chapter, are going to join and form a single entity and as you have studied in your earlier phases of education, especially in economics, you must have heard about economies of large scale production. So various other associated economies of large scale production will also accrue to these what we call entities, no doubt about that. So accrual of Accrual of large scale economies. Accrual of large accrual of economies of economies of large scale production. Large scale production. Large scale production. Clear? Large scale production. So lots of economies will accrue to the enterprise and now just think for a moment if two big corporates would join together then what will happen they will be able to wipe out and crush the competition to smithereens isn't it or not when two big giants powerful persons are going to join together then they will be able to crush the competition, they will be able to suppress the competition, they will be able to wipe out the competition. In other words, they will be able to acquire complete monopoly in the market. So we can say suppression of competition. Suppression means wiping out of competition. Suppression. Suppression of competition. So through amalgamation they can wipe out the entire competition from the market and this will help them to gain complete monopoly no doubt about that so point number four is acquirement of monopoly in fact third and fourth month are linked with each other 
acquirement of monopoly. So, before we proceed to towards what we call practical part of this particular chapter, we need to get ourselves thoroughly acquainted with the terms and I hope so little bit of idea by now you are having with, with respect to amalgamation and to be very honest with you, you already know a lot about that. Correct? So, that's what we need to know about amalgamation and second, now we will, second terminology is what we call absorption. So, now we will take absorption. First, we try to gain little bit of idea with respect to amalgamation and after acquainting ourselves with amalgamation, now we shall try to understand the meaning of absorption. Second point is absorption. As you know, absorption. Suppose X limited or say Y limited, it's a big company, its financial strength is very high, its financial stature is very, very sophisticated. Correct? And there is another company in the market, say Z limited, and it's a small company as is reflected through this particular diagram. Now Z limited quite obviously will not be able to compete with Y limited share because of the fact that Y limited is having a very high class financial stature in comparison to Z. Correct? So it means in long terms the prospects of Z limited to compete with Y limited are very slim, are very less. That means howsoever amount of budget Z limited will allocate on the advertising will always be insufficient to meet and compete what we call budget of Y limited as I told as I told you because strength financial strength of Y limited is much higher in comparison to X limited so best course of action now available for Z limited is that Z limited made an arrangement with the Y limited that you Z limit is Z limited is telling Y limited that you absorb us it means now take us in take us in your fold Z limited is simply telling Y limited please take us in your fold in simple words when a big company an existing company whose financial strength and stature is very high takes over another existing company whose financial strength is quite weak, then it becomes a case of absorption. Is it clear to you? So, absorption means when an existing company, 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 takes over another existing company another existing company then it becomes a case of then it becomes a case of absorption then it becomes a case of absorption so, in this case, it has become a case of absorption. Case of absorption. So, it has become a case of absorption. Is it clear to you? So, now it is a case of absorption. Now, the next point is, obviously in this case, Y Limited is the purchasing company and of course, Jet Limited will be vendor company, no doubt about that. Now the next big question is why companies absorb each other? Why Y Limited is interested in absorbing Z Limited? What mileage and advantage Y Limited will draw out through this process or arrangement? 
you are willing but why i am willing to take you over the question is this so we shall try to understand this way round just pay attention i do not know whether you are aware of this or not but see here recently 2 3 years back actually tata motors have you heard about it you must and you should tata motors took over which one have any idea no idea that's the reason i keep on saying when you are pursuing a professional course inculcate this habit of going through what we call business sections that will help you a lo lot correct <clears throat> i know that most of you are nowadays are basically interested in supplemental section of the newspaper rather than the main one but i would like you to actually change your this particular habit and try to flip through some business section papers so that will uh, that will stand you in a very good stead later on especially in your life so anyway recently way back some time back in fact because that's a pretty big news in fact that's why i'm telling you that you should have been aware of it especially if you are pursuing a professional level course tata motors took over took over jaguar of uk now jaguar itself is a very big company very reputed brand jaguar of uk oh sir we have heard about that and we have forgotten and someone here is actually explaining here anyway if you are able to recapitulate it that's very nice but my point is that is still you should inculcate this habit of going through some business section newspapers that will help you a lot anyway tata motors took over jaguar of uk not only that tata also took over lands rover of usa lands rover lands rover of usa both these are terrific brand high brand high value brand and tata was able to acquire them lands rover also known as rangers of usa there was a very big news also 2 3 years back that tata steel took over corus steel you must have had heard about that tata steel took over corus steel isn't it or not and one example i just cite it in the newspaper of today itself as i told you there was a situation of amalgamation anyway we are talking right at this particular moment about absorption so tata steel took over corus steel corus steel is a very big company big steel company and tata took it over so my point is actually what mileage tata got out of it did tata become more richer than what he was earlier no that's not the case in fact try to understand the point when tata motors took over jaguar very next day it was the biggest headlines all over the world in the leading newspapers of the nation whether it was washington times whether it was the dawn whether it was new york times times of india hindustan times observer the rising sun and daily star so so all these leading newspapers of the world carried what we call this news on a very big manner now the my point here is that what mileage tata got out of it so suddenly tata which was confined to asia became an international name and its credit rating got a big jump and boost in the international market and that itself brings about so many advantages do you know about it or not i do not know but you should know that when our international credit rating goes very high in the international market many associated advantages accrues to us for example if suppose i am interested in getting my company listed in the leading stock exchanges of the world say nasdaq say dow jones say coyote all these are leading stock exchanges in the world and it is not an easy it is not a cup of coffee or a what we call cup of tea to get ourselves listed in, in such leading what we call international stock exchanges very few indian companies way back till up to 2 3 years back were listed uh, but fortunately at this moment the situation is pretty rosy actually there are lots of companies which are now listed in the international markets in the international stock exchanges but my point is that if i would try to get my company or my entity listed in the what we call 
leading stock exchanges i will have to comply lots lots of what we call legal procedural aspects but if my international crisil rating is very high then i need not require to follow any legal complications i can straight away get a what we call ticket to the international stock exchange that's what my point is so basically entities why they are interested in absorbing other companies what's basically the purpose behind it what's the motive what's the intention it's simple we want to make a sound statement in the international market regarding our financial credibility you got my point or not that's the reason actually corporate houses always stay in the hunt with a hawk eye to what we call absorb other companies is it clear to you so that's the reason that's the objective of absorption so basic objective of absorption is basic objective of absorption basic objective basic objective of absorption basic objective of absorption is is to make is to make is to make a sound statement 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 regarding regarding financial credibility regarding financial credibility financial credibility credibility means trustworthiness credibility means trustworthiness reliability if i would say my credibility is quite high it means indirectly i am saying that my trustworthiness is quite high you can rely upon me you can show faith upon me so that is the reason actually why companies as i am been saying are interested in absorbing other entities that doesn't mean that their what we call uh, wealth will increase or they will become more richer or something like that but definitely they will get many indirect advantages which will definitely help them in what we call gaining such aspirations fulfilled correct so these are the two terms we have already discussed now it's time to finish off this particular session then we are going to begin the next one in few minutes and we will discuss in that external reconstruction remember one thing when you will come back you will not find anything rubbed off so don't get confused so we will begin the next session in a short while but i'm finishing off this one and i'll meet you after a minute or two